Okay, so pleasant afternoon, everyone, students. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, we missed you. Yes, sir. Okay, so we missed you. Okay, and uh, finally, we are here now on our final uh, lecture for for nursing informatics under the special online summer term. Okay, so here with me are again your very proactive instructors for nursing informatics. We have Mom Campbell, we have Sir Sanyo, and of course we have Mom Muji. Okay, kawe kawe naman tayo jan. Okay, yung kawe kawe naman. Okay, so since this is our last session together, online session together, so we are allowing you to turn on your video cameras. Okay, so we are allowing you to turn on your video cameras, guys. Okay, so that we can see your beautiful and handsome faces for for this week. Okay, so yon. So before we proceed with our lecture, okay, so I would like to remind you on the five tasks for week six. Okay, so sorry for the typo. Okay, so this is the these are the five tasks for for week six. So we sent this as an announcement in your Canvas accounts. Okay, so just to remind everyone, so you need to independently study the following modules. So your Canvas login will be monitored. You know what, guys, on our end, we can see if you, you log into your Canvas, we can see the number of minutes that you spend in Canvas, and that will serve as your attendance per week. So make sure that you independently um, study the modules for 15, 16, and 17, and attend our synchronous sessions or watch the recording for those of you with unstable internet connection. And uh, answer, only one multiple choice question set for week 15. Participate in the discussion board because this will formally seal your participation for that particular week. You need to respond to our open-ended questions. You need to respond to a certain concept in nursing informatics. And lastly, your final uh, requirements that you need to submit for this week which is due on July 17, 2020 at 12 noon. So before kayo mag-lunch, so make sure na naipasa nyo na. And don't forget your homework. Okay. So don't forget your homework. If you have not yet submitted yung mga previous course ta, sige, bibigyan namin kayo ng chance na makapag-submit within this week. Kailangan makompleto nyo po yun, especially the course tasks, because these are the basis of your grades. Majority of your grades will be based on the course task. Okay, so for this week, we have a very interesting activity because you're going to watch a video. Okay, after you watch a video, so you need to answer the following question. What is your challenge? What are the non-monetary rewards of being a nurse as depicted on the nurses in the video? What are the possible uses of mobile phone for nursing? And do you agree that nurses are the unsung heroes of today? Amen. And what is telehealth? And how can telehealth improve elderly care, of course, in the Philippines? Okay. So, yon. So, uh, very easy. And don't forget uh, this coming Friday. So, you will have your examination between 1 to 2 p.m. So, this will be very special kasi meron kaming konting twist on your examination. And another, don't forget to answer the evaluation for SOST. Okay. So, it's already up earlier. So please answer the evaluation for SOST. This will give you a voice, guys, on what do you need to improve for SOST. It might not be for nursing informatics, but for all the subjects that you are taking for this SOST. Okay, so at this point, so again, your final examination is scheduled on July 17th, and that is Friday between 1 to 2 p.m. Again, we will be sending to you the link between 1 to 2 p.m. And usually, the examination is only uh, 25 items and you need to complete that within 30 minutes. Okay, so please take the exams kasi mahirap ang special examination. Okay? So especially for those of you who are not yet taking the midterm examination, so that will be scheduled on Saturday. And we will be posting that. So you need to, uh, to review again your modules, most especially our live sessions kasi majority of the questions we're getting from the live sessions that we're having. And this la last live session, so we, we are going to upload the video again So make sure that you're, you will be studying that. Okay, so for this particular week, we have uh, very interesting discussions because it's all about week 15, 16, and 17. So week 15 is all about education 
uh, education and research applications of nursing informatics. So Sir Sanyo and I will be exploring on what are some of the uh, useful websites or useful application of, of informatics into education and into research. Kasi uh, one or two semesters from, uh, from now, you're going to take your research subjects, Nursing Research 1 and Nursing Research 2. So a lot of students are very much afraid of their research subject, but I tell you, don't be afraid because later I'm going to give you some advice on how you can use technology as your topics for your upcoming baby thesis. We're talking about international perspectives in nursing informatics and the future of nursing informatics. We're going to share with you what are some of our plan, what, what are some of our forecasts on the future of the nursing profession. Okay, so guys, let's start our discussion by sharing to you some pictures of the nursing profession. You know what? I really love pictures. If I'm not a nurse, siguro naging uh, photographer ako, okay, because I really love pictures. And uh, I published an article about nursing images across the centuries. And I would like to share with you some of my favorite uh, images from that particular study. Okay, so these are the nursing images across the centuries. So first is one of my favorite pictures from that particular research is entitled The Nurse and the Comforter. And this picture emerged in the 1830s. Ito yung isa sa mga earliest no, picture of a nurse with a technology. And as you can see here, there's a patient inside that vault. Okay, so we call that the iron lung. Not iron man, that is iron lung. And that iron lung is the counterpart of our breathing uh, assistive devices uh, for, uh, for this point. And especially during that time, so when the patient uh, saw that iron lung, most of the patients are, are very much afraid of going to the hospital, especially if they have respiratory illness because they will be put under that iron lung. And one of the major tasks of nurses during that time in terms of technology is to comfort the patients on, on the technologies na ginagamit sa hospital. Just like right now, for example, if magpapa MRI or simple x-ray, some of our relatives are very much afraid to do that. Akala nila there's always pain. But nurses are always on the side of the patient because not only they are technology literate, but they are nurses. They are caring for their patients. And uh, they want patients not to be afraid in terms of the technologies that we're using inside hospitals. Okay, the other picture is known as the nurse and the behaviorist. And as you can see here, that picture of the nurse looks very much assertive. Napaka-assertive. Yung tipong parang nanay, no? Parang yung mga moms natin. Okay, so that nurse and the behaviorist will show us that uh, as early as 1860s, nurses are independent individuals. So meaning, we are not only relying to the doctor. So in fact, the doctors are the ones who are relying on our assessment. So don't um, see nurses as below the doctors or just handmaidens to the doctors, right? So nurses can be equally treated the, the same way that we treat our doctors, okay? Then the next picture is another old picture of a nurse with a technology in the hospital. And this is termed as the technology experts picture which emerged in the 1900s. This picture in France showcases the nurse with a technology beside her. And do you know what is that? That is an incubator. That's the first, one of the first technologies ever invented for hospital use, but for this time for the use of pediatric clients or babies, no? As for pedia siya. So during the time, nurses are going to operate yan. Kaya kailangan technology, com uh, technology competent among nurses. And this picture, I also love this one because this poster was um, used by uh, governments to entice nurses to join the war. Because you know what? You know that if there's a war, no, merong mga wounded soldiers, etc. And we need nurses, especially during those times. So this picture uh, was posted uh, sa community before to encourage uh, nurses to join the war to take care of the wounded soldiers. Okay, so you are soldiers. Okay, so you are soldiers, nurses. And now you are the unsung heroes, no? And this last picture is termed as the nurse and the remedist. And this emerged in 1943. And as you can see, nurses are very technical individuals, right? 
So whatever gadget that you give to nurses, they can easily uh, manipulate that. Especially right now that you are understanding the concepts on how to, to do injections, right? So that is very much important. For nurses, hindi lang tayo basta-basta uh, nag-aalaga ng may sakit, no? So alam natin gamitin ng mga teknolohiya sa, sa hospital. And one of features, of course, mga simple technologies natin, such as the syringes, the patient monitor, the monitoring devices that we attach to the patient. So, these pictures will really tell us that there's an evolution. And during our first meeting, okay, reminisce, during our first meeting, I showed you our interpretation of the nurse's evolution. And as you can see on the last picture, there's a picture there of a nurse in front of the computer. Because nowadays, being computer literate is very much important, right? So, from citizens, we are now becoming netizens. Sabi nga ni Alex Gonzaga, we are becoming netizens already. So meaning we are the citizens of the internet. So even if we are not in the social space, even if we are not interacting physically with other persons, we are in the, we, we are in the virtual space. So that makes us netizens. And as nurses, we need to consider our digital citizenship. Okay, especially in nursing informatics. In learning nursing informatics, kailangan we should know how to access digitally. I know you were given, of course, your G Suite accounts. Uh, I know uh, we, we taught you on how to use the Zoom accounts. And even if we don't give you the step-by-step -step, uh, way on how you can enter our virtual classroom, okay, so you, you have that uh, know-how to use it. And that is uh, competency in terms of digital access. So right now that we are switching to virtual mode, I know the university, uh, for you to be able to submit, for example, your down payment, we are using Dragon Pay. So that's one of the skill then ng isang netizen, a nurse informaticist. You should know how to use technology on, uh, on, on doing marketing, on doing e-commerce, etc. You should know how to send email, emails to your professors. You should know how to use uh, common applications that we use to communicate to one another, and that is digital communication. Another would be digital literacy. You, you should know how to operate some of the gadget, gadgets and be an ethical nurse also under digital etiquette. Okay, you know uh, that you should think before you click. While we are talking here, you don't talk with your classmates. No, you don't do, for example, undesirable actions when we are having our classes. That's part of the digital etiquette. You should know also our responsibilities, our rights, our digital law. And we need to be healthy also when we interacting with computer and you know how to secure your passwords no? from unauthorized use. Just recently, we received a lot of news, for example, big universities being hacked. So fortunately, at Our Lady of Fatima University, hindi tayo na-hack kasi malakas ang ating security in terms of the firewall at yung technologies na ginagamit natin for our websites and dun sa ating mga databases. Okay, so we need to embrace the elements of digital citizenship. So if we're going to, to take a look at these concepts, so as your instructors in nursing informatics, what we want you to be at the end of our SOST in nursing informatics is that you will serve as a global nurse. So meaning, hindi lang kayo pang Pilipinas. So pwede rin kayong padala sa ibang bansa or you can also work in other countries. No? So you, you, you should be a global nurse. And if you're going to talk uh, about what our Board of Nursing in the Philippines is aiming for, ito yung ini-aim nila, that the Filipino nurses should be the best for the Philippines and the choice of the world. Because as you may know it, we are sending nurses, uh, not only of course to serve our communities, our barrios, but of course to serve the world as well. So Filipino nurses heal the world, okay, and make it a better place for you and for me, <laughs> okay. But for me, so when we say a global nurse that heals, we are a healthcare partner, we are an engaged professional, we are a servant leader. And the thing that we're going to discuss later on, nurses or nurse informaticists are also lifelong learners. We know how to use techno technology in education. And we also know how to use technology in terms of nursing research. Okay, so at this point, let's have a simple activity. Gagawa tayo ng simple research lang. Uh, 
right now, because we are experiencing pandemic, let us try to compare and contrast some of the numbers in terms of the cases and number of deaths in different countries. And as nurses, alam natin ang paggamit ng technology. Okay, an, an, an excellent example is the uh, JHU website. JHU refers to Johns Hopkins University. Johns Hopkins University is the best nursing school around the world. And it is located in Baltimore in Maryland. Okay, siya yung top doon sa ano, doon sa buong mundo, no? So ang Johns Hopkins University, especially in nursing course. And Johns Hopkins University, lagi natin yung naririnig sa news recently kasi sila yung nagli-lead in terms of COVID-19 pandemic research and COVID-19 in terms of the numbers. Okay. So in fact, they created this particular website that will summarizes all the cases being sent by different countries. Okay, so these are, uh, and the website is actually located at, yung that particular website that tracks the number of cases from different countries is located at https colon slash slash coronavirus.jhu.edu. Again, what is https? Based from the previous lecture discussions, hypertext transfer protocol. Okay, https hypertext transfer protocol protocol. Ano yung S? Bakit hindi but wala yung S? S means secured. Okay? So one way to check if you are if the website is secured, kailangan meron siyang S. Kapag HTTP lang possible baka mamaya kunin yung data mo. Pero kapag yung website merong S sa HTTP, it means that is a secured website. May extra security siya. Okay. So later, you're going to visit https colon slash slash coronavirus.jhu.edu. Again, what's the extension? .edu. Meaning this is a website coming from an educational institution. Just like Our Lady of Fatima University. Uh, Fatima.edu.ph. Meron pang PH kasi it's located in the Philippines. Right? Again, what is edu? That's an educational website. Pag sinabi natin .com, it means... That, that means that is a what? Com means computer. Commerce, pwede rin, di ba? So pwede rin siyang commerce. Okay? And of course, kapag sinabi natin dot, dot .net, pwede internet, pwede rin network, di ba? Pero ang pinaka-common, of course, kapag dot .gov, that's a government website. Kapag dot .edu, that, that is coming from a, a certain university. And this particular URL came from Johns Hopkins University. Okay. Sige. So at this point, gagawa tayo ng konting um, activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide you into three groups. Okay? So one is group Campbell. The other is group Sanyo. And the other is group Mohimulta. So what are you going to do is from that particular website, you need to check how many are active cases in certain countries and how many died because of COVID-19? Okay, sige. I'm going to assign. Okay, for Sir Sanyo, okay, uh, you will be assigned to Indonesia. Okay, Indonesia. How many cases ang active? How many cases? Uh, how many ang nagka-COVID na namatay? Okay, so please, Assist our students, okay? Then, uh, let the students report later the numbers. Okay, next would be Tim Campbell. Tim Campbell will check Singapore's data. Okay, Singapore's data. And Tim Muji will check on the data for Australia. Okay, so you will check for the data for Australia. Okay, uh, this is what will happen, guys. So, in a few minutes... I'm going to automatically assign you into three separate rooms. Okay, three separate rooms. How are you going to do that? I'm going to click something on my side, then you will be invited to join that room. Okay? So, ang gawin nyo lang, mag-join lang kayo dun sa room na yon. Then, makikita nyo yung inyong champion na si, si Sir Sanyo, si Ma'am Campbell, and si Ma'am Muji. What's the country assigned and who is the student presenter? The assigned country, sir, is Australia and Miss Betshida will be the one to report. 
Okay. Sige. So, How many? Sa, sa amin po is Australia has 9,980 confirmed cases with 108 deaths compared po sa Philippines na may 56,259 confirmed cases po tayo and 1,000 deaths. Hmm, kompleto. Very good. Very well said. Okay. Okay. Very good. Next, si Ma'am uh, Campbell, Team Campbell. Yes, sir. So our our team will be reporting about Singapore, sir. Okay. Who who is our and speaker? And Miss Carla Joy Padul will be the one reporting. Okay, Carla. Okay po. So good afternoon po. Um, sa Singapore po, ang confirmed cases po namin is 45,961. And then yung global recovered po is 42,285. While the global death is only 26 po. Oh, konti lang no? So what practices kaya yung meron sila sa Singapore? Very good. Okay, so we're very uh, good uh, speaker students, no? Next, of course, Team Sanyo. <laughs> Mukha meron silang uh, internet challenges ngayon, but I'll try to call in Miss Maria uh, Elaine. Are you ready now, Miss Maria Elaine? Yes, po. Good afternoon, po. Okay, so go, go, go. Kaya mo yan. Sa Indonesia naman po, uh, total confirmed po is 75,699. Oh my gosh. Oh. And then, uh, recovered po is... Asia. 35,638. And then deaths po is 3,606 po. Grabe, no? may tumalo na pala sa si Pilipinas. Oh, telephone oh. number one sa Southeast oh. Asia po, no? Pero I love your background, no? Glitter <laughs> background. <laughs> okay. Okay. Natin. Shining, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Okay, so very good, no? So you know what? Um, uh, the, the activity will tell you that by using technology, we can actually do create some sort of what we call evidence-based decisions. Okay? So with the use of technology nowadays, it's very easy for us to track those cases, especially the technology that we shared to you from Johns Hopkins University. And you just recently experienced our Zoom breakout sessions. Okay? So in the future, you might uh, as well try to, to check pa din and to compare different countries, especially their charts, so that you can see what went wrong and what would be the possible problem for that particular country. And for example, in terms of Vietnam, as you know, uh, we have the same culture as is Vietnam, pero uh, bakit sila, content cases nila, but ang Pilipinas, ang dami pa din. Okay. So with that, so at this point, we're going to share with you our first lecture, and that is all about some of the applications of nursing informatics in education and research. And later, we're going to um, give you some sort of an overview of how we can maximize the use of technology in education and research. Okay. Hello. And good day to you all who are watching right now, and hope all is well. For today's presentation, let me show this interesting and informative topic, educational and research application with subtopics, nursing curriculum in the information aids, and computer in nursing research. So sit back, relax, and enjoy learning. To begin with, may I present the objectives of this particular subject matter. First, understand the importance of IT integration in the nursing curriculum. Second, compare nursing education informatics models. Third, inculcate importance of computers in research. There you have it. So join me in my presentation all throughout the remaining 14 slides. Can I see your thumb ups, guys? At the count of one, two, three, you thumbs up now. Okay, thank you for your participation. Nursing is an information-intensive profession. 
and nursing education relies heavily on the acquisition of information to educate students in their professional programs. Thus, the acceleration of technological development and availability of information will have profound effects on how students learn and how nursing is taught and how care is delivered. The management of information is and will continue to become one of the most daunting challenges for faculty, students, and nurses. Maintaining currency with the technology as well as with the dramatic changes within the educational system as a result of digital technology will occupy the energies of faculty and administrators. Health informatics will enable the medical and paramedical student, practitioner, and faculty member to access and critically evaluate biomedical information and efficiently utilize increasingly complex biomedical information for problem solving and decision making. Thus, empowering the individual to act his role as lifelong learner, clinician, educator, communicator, researcher, and manager. The education industry must take into consideration the information management and educational environment as key steps in transforming the education to meet the needs of the 21st century. Faculty development must also be established as well as thorough analysis in integrating the nursing informatics in the new curriculum. Here now is the nursing education informatics model. A number of models have been presented for educators to emulate in designing curriculum for the inclusion of nursing informatics. Now let's take a look to the first model. In 1998, Travis and Brennan proposed a model that emphasizes the inclusion of information science as essential in the undergraduate curriculum. In 1996, Riley and Saba proposed the nursing informatics education model, or known as NIEM. In NIEM, the domains of computer science, information science, and nursing science are integrated throughout the curriculum in a progressive leveling to ensure the development of nursing informatics competencies. Next, in the year 2000, CARTI. CARTI proposed an informatics model in graduate informatics that has an interpretation of data, information, data, and knowledge that is complex and non-linear. And the last is Turley in 1996. Turley suggested that nursing informatics has a specific nursing focus. There are acknowledged areas of interdisciplinary and collaborative foci that need to be explored and studied. The next slides are supplemental websites for study aids of nursing students. For medical ethics issues, you can browse AMA or the American Medical Association for information of medical ethics. The website is found below on your screen. For a case study on geriatric assessment, you can search their website shown on this screen, Virtual Healthcare Team. This web page offers four interdisciplinary geriatric assessment case studies. For Anatomy of the Human Body, the Bartleby.com edition of Grace Anatomy features 1,247 pictures from the classic 1918 publication. Their website is www.bartleby.com slash 107 slash. Similar site about human anatomy is Inner Body, your guide to human anatomy online. It's easy to navigate and the user begins by choosing among 10 systems, skeletal, digestive, 
muscular, lymphatic, endocrine, nervous, cardiovascular, reproductive, and urinary. Graphics are interactive and users can view animations of the system, tutorials, and descriptions. Their website is www.innerbody.com slash htm slash body dot html. McHill University Virtual Stethoscope. It's a multimedia tutorial featuring a virtual stethoscope to assess both respiratory and cardiovascular conditions. Also included is a review of selected cardiac and pulmonary physiology and pathophysiology topics. Their website is available now on your screen. For diagnosis and therapy, the Merck Manual 17th Centennial Edition is available free, searchable by keyword or the table of contents. Merck also offers two other complete manuals through this, through this site, the Merck Manual of Geriatrics and the Merck Manual of Health and Aging. Their website, please take note on your screen. For a physical exam or assessment study guides, it is created by the University of Florida medical program. These guides are thorough and clear. The exams offered are vital signs, back and extremity, chest and lung, cardiology, head and neck, eye, abdominal, breast, pelvic, neurologic, and dental status. Their website, again, please take note, it is now shown on your screen. This study aid is special because it is RN Central, created by nurses for nurses and students. This site offers good resource links, but the highlight is its care plan corner with predefined nursing care plans under three categories, altered or alterations, impaired or impairment, and general. Some examples of care plans are found on this website, www.rncentral.com. For drug index information needs, Rx list. The information provided for each drug includes the description, clinical pharmacology, indications and dosages, side effects and drug interactions, warnings and precautions, drug overdosages, contraindications, and patient information. If you want to know their website, just browse www.rxlist.com. Let me conclude with the topic computers in nursing research. The use of computers and software applications are ubiquitous throughout the research. Computers facilitate the research process in a number of ways. Computerized literature searchers are a particular advantage to the researchers because they save time and can increase the scope of the search and the number of databases that can be searched. The computer can also help researchers collect and data and analyze data prepare research reports, disseminate research findings. Computer in research in science is so extensive that it is difficult to conceive today a scientific research project without computer. Many research studies cannot be carried out without use of computer, particularly those involving complex computations, data analysis, and modeling. All right, that's it for today. And thank you for listening.
Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Sir Sanyo, for that very wonderful presentation. So at this point, let us uh, take a look now at some of the application of nursing informatics in education. Okay, so Bini, how, how can uh, we apply, of course, inf informatics in education? So I think one uh, very good starting point for us to ponder on is the quotation coming from Richard Riley which is a former U.S. Secretary of Education. And according to uh, Richard Riley, we are preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist and uh, using technologies that haven't been invented. Okay, and that is correct. You know what? Uh, the changes that's happening in our environment is so fast that sometimes education cannot cope up with, uh, with the needs of the current society or the needs of, of our industry. And if we're going to take a look at how uh, learning should occur, is that uh, we need to, to teach our students how to know, how to do, how to be, and uh, how, how they can communicate and collaborate with one another, just like what we, uh, we did earlier. Because learning will not only uh, focused on understanding the modules which are uploaded in your canvas. Learning is not only, of course, uh, focused on doing things to be submitted, but of course, learning entails the use of one's learning doing sa everyday lives nyo and, of course, uh, collaborating with one another. Okay, so if you're going to ask, as, ano ba yung vision namin for, for our nursing students sa paggamit ng technology? We want our students to be empowered individuals. That is, um, no questions for that. We want the students as empowered individuals. So I know we have uh, lots of, of tasks that you need to accomplish for every week. And we do appreciate those students who really comply with their requirements. And we really appreciate those students who are not cheating Kasi you can do cheating now that we are not, of course, in person. Just like uh, before that when you take the quiz, you don't have any, uh, for example, cheat codes, etc. So even if there's technology, we want you to, to be empowered individuals. Kasi sabi nga nung, uh, nung uh, mentor ko before, there are two types of students. Isang student na matalino at isang student na matalinaw. <laughs> okay. And nowadays... Uh, with the use of technology, it's very easy for us to learn, not only uh, within classrooms or within virtual classrooms just like a, as this one, but we can also embrace lifelong learning and life-wide learning. So what's the difference between the two? When we say lifelong learning, okay, so we are learning things that are in line with our specialty. And for you guys, you, ch you choose nursing as your uh, career. Right? So if you learn learning how to uh, do intramuscular injection, if you're learning how to do bed making, if you're learning how to do hand washing, these are these topics are related to nursing. So anong tawag natin doon? Lifelong learning. If you are learning things that are aligned with your degree, we call that lifelong learning. But if you are learning things uh, that is not aligned with your degree, that is what we call life-wide learning. For example, because of YouTube nowadays, you can easily learn how to cook, uh, for example, a cake or how to bake uh, cookies, etc. Is that related to nursing? No, but you are still learning. So if you are learning something that is not aligned with your chosen profession, we call that life-wide learning. But of course, uh, based from Dr. Dino, one of the concepts that I want also to advance is the concept of learning by serendipity. Because when you say learning by serendipity, we are talking about learning things from your experience. Me meaning, learning is not only confined within virtual classrooms, within the four corner corners of the classroom, but you can also learn through your experiences. Kaya nga yung definition, life, uh, learning by serendipity, it means learning that of course unexpectedly from personal and professional experiences. And you know what? In education, there will come a time that there will be additional specialization for nursing. Example, so uh, tourism is very much common, but in the future, I'm looking at a certain scenario where, wherein there will be a tourism nurse. Okay, so there will be also a telephone nurse or what you call the specializes in telehealth. 
there will be nurse informaticists who are experiencing it now. And there's also, there, there are also nurses that are focused in, for example, specifically in sports. So darating yung mga time na yan. Okay, not only now that we have Bachelor of Science in Nursing, pero magkakaroon pa rin tayo ng mga specializations because uh, the environment is really uh, changing very fast and we need specialized nurses such as tourism nurse, telephone nurse, and sports nurse. Okay, so at this point, let us take a look at now at some of the practical applications of technology in education. Sir Sanyo did a very great job on explaining to us and sharing to us some of the websites that we can use for education and research. So I think one of the most practical applications of technology is the use of human patient simulator in our clinical laboratories. Diba? At the Rice Tower, we have human patient simulators na nanganganak, for example, that you can use during emergency situation. And that is a very concrete example on how you use technology in education. So not only for human patient simulators, but the use of laptops, the use of patient, uh, for example, that patient monitors in, in our virtual laboratory. These are very practical use of, uh, of technology in our virtual laboratory and the use of several applications that are stored on iPads. These are uh, also concrete examples. So with the use of technology, we can easily teach students on how they can properly, uh, for example, give uh, shocks to the patient, especially those that are in emergency. So, paano ba yung placement niyan? Okay, tama ba yan? Kapag nag-introduce ka ng electricity, so, tama ba yung pagkakalagay ng ano, nung, uh, nung leads mo? Another thing would be in the laboratories. So, previously, before uh, you came in, in, in the nursing profession, ano, so, you have uh, microscopes in your laboratory, you have monitors that can be projected, and these are actually from the College of, of Nursing and the College of Medicine. So, we have also instructors who are creating uh, books, no? who are creating e-books that can be used, and hopefully, you can use it for your medical surgical nursing. And these are not actually different from what the world is using. Kasi kahit sa ka magpunta, they are using e-books. So for example, instead of um, going to the anatomy laboratory, so meron na tayong mga applications ngayon in virtual reality that you can check wherein you can view the brain, the heart, no, the kidneys, antero, posterior, lateral positions, etc. by, of course, using your fingers to rotate the virtual picture. So very common yan. No? And hopefully, my experience siya. Another would be the, the one that we're experiencing nowadays, yung paggamit ng Zoom sessions okay, for every lecture. That is very much uh, common nowadays. But of course, if the nurses are not competent in using technology, wala din yan. Kasi sabi nga ni Steve Jobs, one of my idols, technology is nothing. What is important is that you have faith in people, that they're basically good and smart, and if you'll give them tools, they will do wonderful things with them. So we really appreciate those students who, who mastered Zoom technology uh, this time of SOSD. We also appreciate those students who have learned how to use Canvas Nung una, medyo nangangapapa kayo. But of course, pinag-aralan nyo yan. Kaya saludo kami talaga sa inyo. So, these are some of the applications of technology in education. How about in the field of research? You know what, guys? Uh, one to two months from now, you will be taking Nursing Research 1. And the next semester, you will be taking Nursing Research 2. So, ito yung tinatawag nilang baby thesis. And a lot of students are afraid of the research subject kasi mahirap daw, uh, madami daw gagawin, etc. But of course, it really depends on your mindset. If you're a nurse who knows how to use technology in research, this will be very exciting for you. Okay, and you know what? When we talk about our Lady Fatima University, we are really craving for quality research. So, when we say craving for quality research, we are aiming to produce research that are comparable to international standards, that when you go out of Fatima, you go to other countries, similar in standards. We want to produce research that are reliable, that matches with the expertise of your advisor or your interest as students. We want to produce research that are acceptable in terms of the analysis, 
uh, tama ba yung pag data gather, etc. We want to produce research that are valid, checked by your advisors. Kasi for every group, you will be assigned an advisor for the College of Nursing and those research that are clearly and concisely written. So at this point, I'm going to uh, give you as early as now some advices on how you can cope up with your nursing research subject with the use of technology. But of course, one, one excellent advice that I can give you is that be different. Don't go the mainstream, which means don't replicate what the others are doing. If they are just... Uh, giving surveys and after that collecting the survey tallying that uh, explaining that in percentage use technology okay so use technology especially for example number one topic if you will be selecting a topic that you will be doing research on make sure that you integrate the use of technology in nursing because you will be thinking of a, a certain topic that you want to work on as a group and uh, you will be working on that for, for two semesters with your group to complete your thesis. So my first advice would be uh, for the topic, you integrate technology. Because when you integrate technology, that will not be outdated. Especially now that we are in this, uh, in, 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 in this current times that we are using technology in nursing. Right? So take technology as one of your topic. Okay. Examples. Just to give you some examples from previous students. You know what? We have a group of students who developed a game. Okay. Hindi namin tinuro ang programming. Pero may mga estudyante, they embrace lifelong learning and they embrace life by learning. They learned how to create a game on their own. Okay. So what they did is they tested their created, created game to a group of preschoolers. Then after that, uh, they they give pre-test and post-test to check whether nag-improve yung knowledge ng mga bata in terms of nutrition. So, as you can see, this is a very interesting game. This is not, uh, no, uh, this is not uploaded or ready-made. These are created by the students. And you know what? When you say nursing students, they're very much creative. What they did is they create this game with the storyline. We have Princess Glow, uh, Princess Glow, uh, Prince Grow and Captain Go. Okay, so these are uh, these are the uh, characters in the game, and what you need to do is you need to help these characters choose the 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 foods that will make them grow, glow, and go. Okay, and from this particular study, we prove that the use of games is really effective in teaching children nutrition. So yun yung research project nila. Nag-enjoy pa sila. Okay, another thing. I know most of you, like me, you really love basketball. Right? Okay, but of course, ngayon, medyo ngayon na, na bakante, no? Kasi pandemic, no? Hindi na tayo makakapaglaro. Sobrang busy din. Okay? So, I know a lot of you are very fond of basketball. Okay? So, you can also use technology for that. And don't forget to include your interest once you integrate technology on your topic. So, for example, I have a group of students, no? So, puro boys. Kaya, syempre, uh, gusto nila yung topic na about health, healthy individual in terms of sports. Okay, so what they came up is a study utilizing elite athletes. So, what we did is I give them my contacts, no? So, we coordinated with the elite athletes of the Philippines, okay? And uh, we did this study. So this is study towards mental health, wellness, and sport motivation. We talk about their motivation. And another area that we created, uh, we use technology is that, alam nyo yung, ano, yung, uh, yung tamang posture, no? tamang posture sa, um, sa pag-shoot ng bola. For example, you are at the, at the three-point mark. Okay? So we use an application sa iPad to check yung posture na nakaka-shoot on that, that mark. Okay, so we then at the end of the research, we give them recommendations on what is the proper posture for you to ensure uh, ano yung angle, so ano yung muscle na hindi mo dapat strain, etc. So nag-enjoy ba ang mga estudyante? Nag-enjoy mga estudyante dyan. Gumamit kami ng technology? Gumamit kami ng technology. 
Okay, another thing. A group of nursing students are very fond of using pens. And they also integrate technology in research. Ang topic nila is to compare e-pets or electronic pets with the actual pet. Okay, guys, can, can you please repeat after me? Can you say petmanship? Petmanship. Okay. Do you know the concept of petmanship? When you say petmanship, that is the concept in nursing wherein uh, yung pet therapy will bring about a positive change to the health of our clients. So yun yung ano, petmanship, which means pet and human friendship. So meron daw siyang ano eh, uh, meron din daw siyang therapeutic effects, especially if you are sad. So this group of students, they compared a group of elderly exposed to electronic pets, just like what you are downloading in your devices. Okay, hawakan nyo, they replicate, etc. Hawakan nyo yung noon, nag nagbabark siya, etc. So it it actually give entertainment effects and therapeutic effects, especially to, to, to elderly. But when we compare it to the actual pets, there's a group of, of these pet lovers in the Philippines who, who's, who's uh, giving their services, especially dun sa mga elderly homes in the Philippines na every week, uh, one hour per day. No? So, dadala nila yung pets, tapos nakikipaglaro yung pets dun sa mga elderly. Yun. So, kinumper nila. So, which one is better? The actual pet. However, we discovered that the use of e-pets have heightened entertainment value, especially if you are anxious or especially if you are sad at that particular moment. And I think the best example that I can share with you is my own research, which is in telehealth, which was discussed uh, during the previous weeks by Mom Campbell, okay? the use of telehealth dun sa nursing. So ito yung ginawa namin. We created a, a group of elderly. We, we teach them on how to use computers for, for one month. Then we expose them to, to telehealth sessions for another month. So we chose a, a province in Bulacan, and that is Marilao province. Okay? Um, pang Marilao province. Bulacan province, town of Marilao, as you can see, separated. Merong mga, mga health center na magkakalayo. So we created a telehealth center at pagbayan na lubasaan ng Marilao. Then, those elderly located in the telehealth center are actually communicating every day for 30 to 1 hour uh, at uh, approximately 62 kilometers away from that, their site. So, nakabase ang telehealth center for care providers at uh, Lady Fatima University. So, this is a group of faculty members no, na nagbibigay ng health teaching doon sa elderly. Okay. And uh, the best thing for that, it was recognized in the international scene. Okay. And as you can see, one of your tasks this, this week, you're going to view that video and that was featured at TEDx Brussels. Okay. So we published, uh, cert, uh, public, uh, we published papers for that out of the research that we're producing. And even up to this, up to this year, uh, ito bago lang kapapublish lang nito ng 2020. So we're still working on research related to telehealth. And that is our uh, view, guys. We want you, our students, to embrace research and to enjoy doing research while you are using technology. So for example, this group of, of nursing students in the graduate school level, they completed a research for one week using Google Drive because they are far away from, from one another. And uh, not only that, after completing their paper, they have managed to present it in an international conference in 2008 in Indiana, Police, Indiana. So we are sending students, those who are good, have, uh, having good outputs, utilizing technology, not only our graduate school students, but of course, our undergraduate students as well. This, this is one of those batches of good, very good students who are good in technology and yung topic nila sa research, gumamit ng technology. So, kung nakarating sila ng US and they are co-sponsored by the Our Lady of Fatima University to present their work in the US. Okay? So, siguro, ano, I'm giving you now enough inspiration for you to use technology in your research. What else? They attended that conference in the US and not only that, they met members of the Board of Nursing in the Philippines. Kaya na starstruck sila. They're rubbing elbows with, with those uh, uh, talaga namang seasoned researchers. 
Okay? So, and whatever you produce in your research, make sure that it can be used by the community. And we call that from conceptualization to commercialization. We are very much happy because from the past several semester, our nursing students are using a lot of technologies. Okay? And our nursing students are using lots of technologies in their research work. For example, the door that can be used in the hospitals. How can we make uh, the use of energy in hospitals more efficient? How can we teach students, for example, uh, yung, yung actual uh, movement ng heart, etc. So, and I'm very proud to say na yun sa mga research nila, nakapag-produce na tayo ng patent. Okay. And of course, na-register na ang patent na yan. Okay, sa, sa IPO field, nakuha na namin yung mga registration yan. Kaya kapag na-commercialize yan, kikita pa sila. Just like, for example, you have your, that Gatorade. That Gatorade is a student project. It was um, uh, intellectual property of University of Florida, but this was actually a uh, student project po yan. So, another example is not from nursing, but from the College of Pharmacy. And you know, pharmacy guys, no? So, they are working on research related to medications. So, they they created uh, a medis medication that can be used for fungal infections, okay, just like hadhad, buni, etc. And these are cheaper alternatives. And hopefully, uh, malapit na itong makommercialize, proudly produced by the Our Lady of Fatima University. Ang tawag natin sa kanya ay TLC or TLC Tanglad Lemon Grass Cream. Or from, from, from our uh, definitions, nurses, TLC means tender, loving, Care. Okay, so at this point, let us take a look now at nursing informatics in the future. Nursing informatics is growing at an unprecedented rate. So from the first industrial revolution, from the invention of uh, steam engine, from the invention of electricity, second industrial revolution, third industrial revolution, the development of computers, na nandito tayo ngayon sa third industrial revolution, to the upcoming revolution known as the fourth industrial revolution or the presence of cyber physical systems. So during our first week, we discussed that there's also, of course, artificial intelligence that can be used in the hospitals. And for us nurses, I introduced to you uh, Alexa that helped us okay, in some of the tasks here sa bahay. And we also introduced to you that Fourth Industrial Revolution has something to do also with virtual reality, with augmented reality, with the use of robots. So we are looking forward, guys, you graduates or completers of the nursing informatics course that in the future, when you uh, have your, your nursing informatics course, you use technology as one of your subjects. Kasi ang projections ngayon, magkakaroon na tayong tinatawag natin virtual nursing. That you will take care of your clients, not in person, but of course, through the use of technology. You can see here, guys, so the, uh, the actual formula to be successful is not the looks, not the intelligence, but of course by, by being great. And you know what? So I want to give this conf confession to you guys. Uh, I really owe technology uh, on my success in, in the nursing profession. Because during our time, so that, that was me when, when I was uh, still at Our Lady of Fatima University. That was me when I was at Our Lady of Fatima University. So during that time, I consider technology. No, I, I, I'm one of the few students who really rely on technology for, for everything that I do. So for example, when we do duties, etc., I always introduce these particular applications. So I have really passion on, on the use of uh, technology. And I never imagined that my love of technology and my love of informatics will bring me to places and... Uh, just like, for example, at Apple Distinguished Educators to be part of this elite group of nursing educators who are utilizing uh, technology in the nursing profession. So this particular picture show you my very first ever presentation in an international audience. Okay? And uh, right now, so I, I cannot imagine uh, kung paano ang bilis ng progress ko in nursing because of, of course, nursing informatics. And I'm very happy that I, I'm now working on the things that I really love with the use of technology. So you are very fortunate, guys, because our Lady of Fatima University is really also embracing the use of technology, especially in health education, especially in nursing informatics. 
We are supported by a group of individuals who are also equally passionate in technology in bringing about a new technologies in the College of Nursing in the university, just like, for example, 3D printing. So this is part of the fourth industrial revolution and we're exploring now at the uh, university. How can we use 3D printing in teaching our students? How can we use 3D printing in the future uh, for our patients on how to educate them? Or, or even, for example, to, to 3D print some of the prosthetics that can be uh, attached no, to, to the patient. And I really owe technology uh, dun sa career ko ngayon as a nurse informaticist. So at this point, dahil pa dinner na, I would like to share with you my, my, my secret recipe. Okay? Kasi nagluluto din ako, no? Okay. So this secret recipe is if you want to cook an innovative and creative nurse, these are the things that you need to prepare as a chef. You need two technical competency because for nursing informatics, okay, nursing informaticist, we need to be acquainted with technology. You need one medium utilities competency sliced. If there's something wrong happened, you know how to troubleshoot. You need three slices of leadership because nurse informaticists are leaders. You need three strips of patients. We need that nurses. Some guts and pinch of risk. Two to three inch diameter of service because for us nurses, we are heroes also. We need for pickle care, the core of nursing. And of course, one big character slides into halves of values and ethics. And with that, I'm not talking only about your values, your ethics, your character, but I'm talking about your passion or your grief. So guys, um, at this point, in behalf of uh, our teaching force for nursing informatics, Sir Romeo Sanyo, uh, Ma Melanie Campbell, and uh, Ma Muhimulta, we would like to thank you as we say goodbye to the final session for nursing informatics. And uh, we're really passionate about technology. For everything that we do, we want to make it uh, different whenever we have a session just like this, guys. And if you're going to take a look inside our hearts, so we have a deep concern for you students, not only uh, during the pandemic, but of course, kahit pre-pandemic or post-pandemic, we have that desire for, for you guys to learn. Okay? Uh, we're, uh, we're very apologetic for our shortcomings, if meron mga kaming shortcomings, okay, in terms of technology and others. But of course, we really want you the best and hopefully we can, we can meet you again in the future. And as a finale, we want to leave you some words from our favorite novel. And this is from Dan Brown. So may our philosophies keep pace with our powers, with technologies. May our compassion keep pace with our powers. And may love, not fear, be the angel of change. So with that, guys, thank you very much for one full, fruitful SOST week. And hope you will study for your finals. With that, thank you very much. This is Dr. Michael Joseph Dino. This is, uh, of course, we have uh, Sir Romeo Sanyo. We have uh, Ma'am uh, Melanie Campbell. And, of course, Ma'am Muhimulta now signing off.